But number three, they're set to pull out of Libya on August the 1st, which they announced oh. a couple of months ago. So three okay. very good reasons why the globalists would be angry with them. Um, and As usual, total precision from Watson. I want you to continue on that with Bob Chapman, but finishing up with Robert, what are your comments on that? That, that was what I was talking about earlier, that your government had been getting really crosswise with the establishment with every move they were making. There's, they, 99% um, of the time, they, they follow the plan. But now there's an um, election coming up, and, and uh, you know, you divert a bit from the plan maybe for a while. And then, uh, so I, I'm not sure if it was a punishment as much as, you know, this had to happen somewhere to, to just, you know, continue stating what they want to state. Uh, so they, looks like they just chose Oslo. This time. Yeah, unfortunately, and, I, and I've got intel, but also a gut feeling. Austin's one of their targets. So is Dallas, Chicago, uh, Houston, because uh, Gary Hart said that on Fox one time, giggling about it. They love to brag beforehand. Robert, anything else you'd like to add? No, if uh, you think it's coming to Austin, I'm just praying for you guys. This is, um, this is not good. This is no fun. So now I think I have to go um, help rescue some people and do some, some uh, voluntary cleaning up. All right, sir. Well, if you'd like to take any photos or anything, too, that you see, we're going to put you on hold and give you my producer's uh, uh, internal email. We'll also give you uh, uh, give him Aaron's email, too, in case you're gone later tonight. Jaron, I'll have Aaron stay late. He loves to anyways. Can't get him out of here. He's such a hard worker. Uh, but uh, Jaron does a great job as well over the weekend. He helps us get the Sunny Show produced. So send it to Jaron because he's on the ball and Aaron. And I'm going to put you on hold and give you both those internal emails. Please, any write-ups, any intel, any photos, uh, we won't use your name. Please get them to us, Robert. Thank you so much. I will. Thank you, sir. All right, put him on hold, please, and uh, give him your email, Jaron and Aaron's. Um, okay, uh, incredible. Uh, Paul Watson, uh, again, more statements. Um, um, uh, recap those points you just made, and then I want Bob Chapman to, to comment on those points you made. Um, well, just, just to add as well, Reuters are now saying that it's probably a, an alliance between Islamists and right-wing extremists. Of course, the guy who supposedly <laughs> car carried out the shooting was a blonde-haired Norwegian. And also, that's the script. Okay, that's it. That came out in Reuters. Absolutely. I told you. I saw it in the tea leaves from all the data I integrate. I could see the scripting. Ladies and gentlemen, right-wingers in Europe absolutely hate the Muslims and try 24-7 to kick them out and are tried in, by government tribunals for saying, rout the Muslims. If you think right-wing militia groups and people are working with the Muslims, ladies and gentlemen, I got a bridge I want to sell you. Okay, Paul, now I'm getting freaked out. you got to admit, Paul, did I not absolutely 100% call this? Well, yeah, I mean, we were talking about it in relation to Libya and Gladio because that was very active before in Europe. Kurt wrote also, a story last week saying, will they run Operation Gladio in Europe to demonize Libya? So, so uh, oh, give, me, did, give yeah. me the Reuters headline, Paul. They're now saying white Al white, whitey working with Al-Qaeda. They're saying security experts say suspicion is likely to fall on both Islamist and right-wing extremists following the deadly bombing, and that's in uh, snap analysis. No clear pointers in Norway twin attacks is the headline, but the, that's what so-called security experts are saying. But also there's a comment left by a Norwegian on Prison Planet, and uh, his father is a dynamite expert, and he, he's saying that the uh, evidence appears as if the explosion came up from underneath. And apparently there was um, road and sewer work going on in the days before, so it looks like something's come up from underground, just as in the case of 7-7 London bombings, and later being blamed on this car bomb. We should have asked Robert that question. That's important. Now, here's Reuters, snap analysis, no clear pointers in Norway twin attacks, but then the first line says suspicion is likely to fall on both Islamists and right-wing extremists following a deadly bombing and a shooting at a political gathering in tranquil Norway. Why would a real right-wing group bomb something knowing it would destroy their credibility? Why would Muslims do that? Bob Chapman, your take on what Watson just covered. Well, as I said uh, just earlier, uh, whatever their goal is, we don't know yet. Uh, we can guess at general goals, but uh, this will uh, go far beyond uh, 
just one issue. Uh, they never do anything for one issue. There's always three or four things that they're trying to accomplish when they make a move like this. And um, uh, I think the groundwork, as Mr. Watson pointed out, uh, was all there, the uh, pulling of troops out, freezing of funds going to Greece, because I guess they didn't like the way uh, the EU or the IMF or whomever uh, was handling it. And um, one of the things that most people don't know in relation to Greece is that they are and have been for many, many years pro-Palestinian. And so uh, I think that in order to hold the money up from going to Greece that they were supposed to contribute must have been a monumental thing for that government because they also are pro-Palestinian too. But uh, as far as getting to the points of light as to where this is all headed, uh, we're going to have to go over this more and more to find out exactly what they were up to because it's a government operation, as you pointed out, and um, we're going to find out where they're going with it. Bob Chapman, stay there. Paul Watson, final segment with him coming up. Then it'll be Bob Chapman, Alex Jones, and your calls uh, as we go into overdrive. The main radio broadcast will end in about nine minutes, and then we'll be internet streams only at InfoWars.com and PrisonPlanet.tv. Paul Watson, in this segment, we're going to let him go and let him get back to work and with these breaking reports at PrisonPlanet.com. In the whole next hour, I'm in a whole hour of overdrive with Bob Chapman and your calls, 800-259-9231, and I'll be back live on the AM and FM dial this Sunday, 4 to 6 p.m. live for the Sunday transmission. Bob waiting in the wings till we start the next hour. The internationalforecaster.com. Gold is above $1,602. Silver above 40 continuing. We'll look at the economics as well next hour with Bob. Uh, I did three hours for many years, then went to four hours. Got the TV show coming soon. And then I'm addicted to doing four hours. And uh, But when the TV show launches, there will be no more overdrive except when there's these big breaking events, which other stations do too, but we're a network. Uh, it's just the information is absolutely key here. Uh, Paul Watson, we got four or five minutes left in this segment. Break down everything you've covered. You've really given us a lot of key key clues and tidbits. Then the, the, the fact this is a multiple event attack, it, it stinks to high heaven. You throw the blonde hair into it, it follows the uh, scripting for white Al-Qaeda reaching a fever pitch in the uh, preparation. Well, what they're saying now is that it's pretty clear that this shooting that happened after the bombing is the main event. They're talking about 25 dead. And remember that this is being pinned on this six foot three blonde Norwegian who dressed up as a policeman, tricked his way into this uh, island complex dressed as a police officer by saying he was checking security after the bombing and then started this massacre, and now they're saying that 25 dead uh, are on the shore there. So it's, it's definitely going to fall on the white Al-Qaeda by the looks of it. But on the flip side, you've got um, this claim of responsibility from helpers of jihad, which has been reported by the New York Times, but has also been contradicted by others who are saying that this claim was never made. That's like helpers but, of Santa Claus. I mean, this is incredible. <laughs> but the... Uh, the actual group that the New York Times is pinning it on is this group called, uh, headed up by Mullah Krekar, called Ansar al-Islam. And uh, Kurt Nimmo's posted a story on Infowars.com which points out that the, the leader of this group, Mullah Krekar, was approached in 2005 to work with the CIA. Ah. So that's, he refused at the time, but... There's definite intelligence connections to this group. Well, that's like a is. SWAT uh, running the uh, 7 7 and being MI6 and being protected. That's even Fox News and uh, MSNBC admit that. Exactly. The Economist, which is a big globalist publication, is also speculating that left wing renegade environmentalist angry at Norway's Arctic oil program may be involved. So, I mean, the kaleidoscope is still in a flux and they're talking about all these different groups but judging from the fact that 25 are now dead at this with this confirmed massacre by a blonde norwegian man i mean it it, it looks clear who who this is going to fall on and it's going to be you know white al-qaeda again and as i said before the break 
uh, three very good reasons for Norway to receive a slap on the wrist. One, they're backing the Palestinian path to statehood at the UN, big vote which is set, set to take place at the start of September. Number two, they announced they were pulling out of Libya on the 1st of August, so that obviously upset some people with NATO preparing this massive bombardment because it looks as if Gaddafi is now going to refuse to step down. Um, and on that token, I note that Anders Rasmussen has vehemently come out in, op you know, condemning this. He's become very public in the hours after it. And also, this uh, $42 million that they refused to send to Greece back at the end of May. So three very good reasons for Norway to get a slap on the wrist from the globalists with this bombing and shooting today. All right, or give them the political cover to get back under the globalist command base. Thank you so much, Paul Watson. We're coming back with a full hour of overdrive. Your phone calls, Bob Chapman, and a lot more. We're going to cover the waterfront of key information, including the shutdown of the U.S. industrial system. Straight ahead, main transmission now is over. Ask yourselves, what are you doing in this time of great challenge? What are you doing to unlock mines?